Canada's favorite sales trainer, Rick Outstanding Cruz. Somebody has got something to teach you whether you have been in this business for 20 minutes or 20 years. Someone has something to teach you. Every time I walk into a company, somebody's got something to teach me. It could be listening to a realtor pick up the telephone and answer the telephone and I say, wow, I like that phrase she used. I like that tonality. I'm gonna make that part of it. Look at your clientele. Look at the people who are in your business and, and, and work towards pleasing the 20%. Tim and sales people have very skinny children. Being coachable is the most important thing that you can do as a salesperson because the people that are coaching you, it doesn't matter if it's someone else who's been in the business for 20 years or your sales manager, they are giving you advice. Other people's experience. Committed. Committed to doing the best for your family, for your church, for your business, for yourself. I think one of the things that I really appreciate about Rick's presentation is the energy that he brings and I think he can be dynamic in helping any company improve their sales. A salesperson is the most important person in Canada. And I'll tell you why. Because we, as salespeople, are responsible for the economy of this country. Develop our skills, people skills, and closing skills. That's what this business is all about. The better we get, the more we make. The difference between good and great, ladies and gentlemen, is about this much. How many of you feel you're pretty good at meeting people? How many of you feel you're pretty good at remembering names? See, I have that challenge, and it has to do with an accident I had, and I got smacked in the head. But what I would like to do here, if I can, is I'm just going to grab someone right here. David, come on up here, buddy. Now, I'm at a convention. I'm at a party. Over here is David standing there. I go meet David. Now, I'm about to share with you a little tiny game that a gentleman by the name of Og Mandino taught me many, many years ago. But it's an opportunity to play this little game when you meet someone. And if you do, I promise you, you will have more people like you. You will have more people want to do business with you. You'll have more people say yes, more people give you referrals, and more people just want to be around you. And it's a very cool thing. Blue-eyed, 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 blue-eyed David. David, I love you. <laughs> now, this is important, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Don't say it out loud. <laughs> well, there's a lot of information to take in all in one day, but it's great for, for growing my business and where I want to go. I love motivation. I'm a fan of Tony Robbins. I think everybody needs to be motivated on a daily basis. What do you end up with at the end of the day if you motivate an idiot? I'm motivated idiot. Now, once you have a habit, you reap the habit, you need to sow a habit. So if you reap an action, you end up with a habit. If you sow a habit, you reap a character. That becomes part of it. Everyone say yes. Yes. I gotta go to Los Angeles. You know the five and a half hour drive to Los Angeles? I gotta drive to Los Angeles all the way to Los Angeles. I gotta go there for five days. My company is sending me there for five days. I don't know why they're sending me there. They got five other salespeople in the office saying, Sam, but they're sending me there. They know I gotta ask my people. I gotta ask my people. I gotta ask them. And I'm gonna get to Los Angeles. That smog and all that stuff is gonna make me sick. I'm gonna be calling for that. I don't know why they're sending me to Los Angeles. And I'm looking at this kid and I'm thinking, son, I know exactly why they want to get you out of the office in five days. <laughs> I've really have been impressed with the energy and the enthusiasm uh, that uh, Rick has brought to this and he's speaking out of personal experience and it's great to find someone who's been there, done that and is now sharing from that so we can make better, more informed decisions today in order to have a better outcome tomorrow. Well, the great salespeople in the world have one long thread rolled into every fragment of their being. A champion's attitude. A champion's attitude is having the ability to throw bad away. The words you say to yourself on a daily basis, what do you say when you get up in the morning? Some people wake up in the morning and say, good God, it's morning. <laughs> Some people wake up and say, thank you God, it's a glorious morning. It's what you say to yourself on a daily basis. We all put gasoline in the car, right? Say yes. You bet. Do what you fear. It's a powerful thing. True champions always ask this very simple question. Compared to what? You know, you learn things when you lie in a hospital bed. It, it, it can be a, a horrible experience or it can be a learning experience. One of the things I learned is that if you're going to spend 60 
16 weeks in the hospital bed, get silk everywhere. I'm not kidding you, because you try to get out with a broken hip, if you're wearing cotton, you can't spin. But a silk will spin around like crazy, and other things like that. I find it so important to be uh, motivated in order to be motivating. And Rick has given us a number of clues there, certainly in body language and reading people, you know, uh, and where they're at in order to try and come alongside them and say, let's go do this together. Not me talking at someone, but to learning to come from where they're at in order to meet with, uh, to see what their needs or issues are and, and providing a solution to that. I think that's a win-win situation. Fear not the door, or chance, or no one was there. Your courage will take your fears away, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to understand that failure is not failure. It's a chance to learn from my mistakes so I can adapt, overcome, and achieve. We tell our children, go to hockey practice. Practice as hard as you can. Yet salespeople don't practice. They say either they're going to close or I'm not going to do this at all. It's a lousy lead I ain't going. It's a chance to practice. So I put a little note on a note beside where I brush my teeth. And I, I wrote it down. It says, it's not my bathroom right now. You know what it says? It says, if you cannot make your bed, how can you possibly make your day? Future. How many of you have ever had this situation where you've gotten an objection and you came up and something came out of your mouth and you said to yourself, man, that's a good that word. Charm. And then you get home that night and you're trying to think, what the heck did I say? You know, that's such a cool thing. So if you audio tape yourself, uh, it is powerful. You will pick up what, what uh, many people in the industry call bad, bad habit words, where you're using the same word over and over and over and over again. And a word like excellent. Um, I, I've, I've, I've talked to a salesperson, why a computer or something, I said excellent. I just kept waiting for the next excellent. I couldn't even listen to him because I knew it was coming within five seconds. Oh, this is an excellent computer. One of the excellent things about it, Rick, is this. Look at this excellent feature. Excellent, excellent. So you can't have those words that you continue to lose. The workbooks are invaluable, and if you go through the workbook after you get home, you couldn't help but improving your record of sales and referrals and your business in general. So have an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful to everyone that you meet. People will want to do business with you. And you can take that thank you to a different level. I mean, it's one thing to say thank you very much. But what if we added something to it? What if we didn't say thank you very much? What if you said thank you very much, John? I appreciate you. Try that today. Even with your children, with your wife, with your husband. Thank you very much for dinner, honey. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. If they say, what's the cost of, the, of a haircut, I say the total investment of the haircut. Now you can use the word cost when you're talking about your competition. If I'm in the auto industry, I might be able to say, you know, the cost of this model here across town is, is, is 32,000, but here, this weekend, the total investment is, is, is 28. How do you think my show happens that I have a little bit better? Literally. I would say, Nobody should miss something like this. This is really worth, as uh, as he charged for uh, it's, the ticket was really affordable. And I would say the knowledge I got from him, it's million dollar worth and it's awesome. And I would say nobody should miss something like this. Thank you. Would that help you with someone like that? Say yes. Contract, that's the worst word of the human language. Contract. All I need you to do is sign this contract. Nobody wants a contract. It's a horrible word. There's only two ways I'm getting out of a contract, baby. I'm either dying in a car accident or I'm getting a lawyer. Neither one is very fun. He paints three horrible pictures right at the most important part. They're in it. He's got the paperwork. And he turns it over and goes, I'll give you on all I need you to do is sign this contract right inside this hex. We got a problem with delivery. The problem is we don't have that in stock. Nobody wants problems in their lifetime. I remember I was being taught to say the word issue, and that was cool for a while, but now issue is the same as problem. He does an issue. Go ahead, ask your children tomorrow morning to say, what's your problem? What do you think they'll say? <laughs> They're going to say, hey, I don't have a problem. What's your problem? <laughs> so I don't say the word problem. I say the word challenge. You should see me when I do a workshop, and I am going and flying into, and I'm going to go and do a presentation in Smeaton, Saskatchewan. <laughs> when I'm in Smeaton, I don't even stand up. I don't move around. I go real slow because the people in Smeaton want it that way. Rick does it in a really entertaining way. 
Uh, he, he keeps the audience engaged and he really changes up the topics a lot. So it doesn't seem to be a long day at all. The time just flies because it's uh, interesting content and it's, and it's current principles that we need today in the new economy. Well, Friday night, man, that's gonna work. <laughs> that was worth the whole investment right there. You're not gonna do business with them because they expect to have you. They will look at you and say, my God, who hired this moron? This guy here is going to talk to me about selling my home and getting the most money for it and he doesn't even have the professional courtesy of giving me action. I'm going to shake his hand. Now the other type of person you're going to meet, they don't want you to shake their hand. And if you try to shake their hand, it freaks them out. They get all scared. They have the fear of being sold. Say yes. yes. Okay. You ever have one of those? Say yes. yes. You bet. Is that a possibility? Say yes. yes. That simple and say yes. yes. You bet it does. You see where I'm going your team, everybody? Please say yes. Okay. yes. okay, good. How many of you would like if there was a sale every single time you got in front of a customer with the stakeholder? Show me how to say yes. Stop. Yes. Absolutely. One of the things that I'm taking is making the small changes daily and remembering to practice in my own marketing and networking and doing that daily, creating the opportunity for that. And I'm sharing that with another friend who's a realtor. You need to prospect every day, just like you need to put gas in your car every day. What is your $5 worth of gas? What is your $5 worth of prospect? Let me tell you what mine is, because I have to prospect just like you. I have to meet people, I have to meet people, I have to say, you own a sales team, you're a manager, you know, I'm Rick Cruz, we need to talk. My five bucks worth of gas is 20 business cards. Just 20, not 500, just 20 cards. And I make a commitment to myself that I'm not going back into that condo until all 20 cards are gone. Nelvade is a pretty damn good place to prospect, isn't it? <laughs> they certainly aren't gonna turn around and walk away from me now, are they? So I get in that elevator, I say, I'm gonna get 11 no's. I love the no's, baby. I'm gonna get 11 no's on the way that I beat it. I'm gonna get 11 no's in this elevator. That way I'm finished my five hours with prospect and I can go home after the workshop. And I'm at the front of the door like this here, and I just turned around and said, hey, everybody, thanks a lot for coming to the elevator meeting. I appreciate you being on time. Go ahead and take that card back there. There's one for you. There's one for you. Give that one to that guy back there. My name's Rick Cruz. I'm a national sales trainer. If you got a sales team, we need to talk. But ladies and gentlemen, don't talk to me now. We're in an elevator. You all be, be quiet. I look at those numbers. <laughs> and he throws those cards down on his desk. And eventually, he's going to throw them away. So he stands behind the garbage can. And he goes, well, I don't remember, I don't, I don't need this one, I don't need this one. This one's garbage, this one's garbage, 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 garbage. And all of those salespeople's cards go in the garbage can except for yours. I find it so important to be uh, motivated in order to be motivating. And Rick has given us a number of clues there, certainly in body language and reading people, you know, uh, and where they're at in order to try and come alongside them and say, let's go do this together. Not me talking at someone, but to learning to come from where they're at in order to meet with, uh, to see what their needs or issues are and, and providing a solution to that. I think that's a win-win situation. 84% of sales come out of the fifth month. 84% of sales come after the fifth no. They've got a gun with five bullets in it, just five. And they shoot you. You say, John, all I need to do is authorize the screen right here. They go, no, I want to think about it. Bang! Salesperson says, oh, gee, no. I hate that. He gets the courage up again. He's holding the bleeding again. He tries again. And they go, now nah, fast too much. Boom! And the salesperson goes, wow! And 84% of sales salespeople quit. They die right there. And you grab them, I mean, your briefcase in, in your car, you quit after two. You still go home with those three no's that you weren't willing to listen to. How many of you have someone you love, cherish, and you like more than anybody, anything in the world? Show your hands. Okay? You die for that person. Say yes. Would you die for him? Yes. Jump in front of the bus, push him out of the way, right? I love that person. They're the most important person in my life. I want you to think about that person right now. I want you to close your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, close your eyes. Close them. I'm looking. I want you to visualize those people. They're right in front of you. They're two feet in front of you. You can smell their smell. You can see their eyebrows. You can see their chest moving as they're breathing. Keep your eyes closed. 
Those are the people that you love and cherish. Those are the people you'll die for. They're right in front of you. You can smell them. You can see them. Okay, open your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Guess what? Those people you were just looking at right now, those are the people that have to take the nose that you weren't willing to take. Because you go home at night, and your little son runs up to you and says, Daddy, Daddy, can I go to basketball camp? I really want to go this year. Can I please? And Daddy's got to reach in his pocket and go, hey, no way you can't take that. I don't have the money. When your wife says, honey, let's just get away for the weekend and get some romance back in our life. I'll have my sisters look after the children. We can go to Niagara Falls for the weekend. You reach in and grab a no and you say, no way, baby. Have you seen my commission check? Why? Because I just didn't have the guts to take. See, at the end of your career, when you want to retire and buy a motorhome, you can't, you have to still keep working because you've been going home every day and filling a trunk with all these big doubles. And the children go to university and you say, no way, you're not getting that education because I didn't have the guts to take five no's and I quit after two. I just needed to take three more no's. I want everyone in this room to stop handing out nose when you go home. And if someone says to you, what do you do, what do you do for a living for this day forward, say, I'm a solution person. You know, I'm a solution person. Think that way. I'm not a salesperson, I'm a solution. You need something, I have a solution for your needs. Don't you agree?